Hi everybody, this is CBGS, I'm the Captain here and we got a request for a top 10 video which is actually a type of video that we always wanted to do here on the channel but couldn't do so because of so many different factors. The time to research, plan the script, picking a location, green screen or no green screen, how it looks, the pandemic, the list goes on. But now that Overdress is a thing with the release of the start decks and the first booster set, what better topic to start our top 10s with than with this one? It's a great time to be doing this especially while fight videos are still in the pipelines. And depending on how this video performs, we might do more even take up your suggestions as well. So without further ado, this is our top 10 Vanguard Overdress right lines. This list is going to look at the right line specifically, while the decks and the subsequent boosts from the Festival Collection 2021 plays a point in where we rank them, ultimately this is a look at the effectiveness of these right lines. And remember, just like any other lists out there, these are just our opinions. Feel free to debate them in the comments below, but play nice. Number 10, UG. Now this is nothing new to most players. There's nothing inherently wrong with Eugene and his deck, but compared to everything else released in Overdress, including its counterpart Nirvana, it falls very flat. We found that Eugene's biggest problem is his own skill. The resting of two rear guards for small gain and single retire is underwhelming, and the Soul Blast 5 ranges from lacking if your opponent still has a lot of rear guards to risky because of how the remaining cards are put into the soul. And there's a good chance that those very cards going in are triggers. The right line supports him quite well, but not enough that it feels like it can make up for Eugene's own shortcomings. If there was a way to send cards back into the deck, or if he had a stronger power boost or retire, then Eugene can climb up from the bottom of this list. Currently at this time, Eugene's only made up by the nature of how a Vanguard game plays. Meaning, you can win with Eugene if you are rolling high. Number 9, Magnolia. It's the first of the start decks to be mentioned on this list, but that's not a knock on the deck itself. Granted, Magnolia offers a Arco Force style of play without the number of battles or waves in the way, but the flaw that we found is similar to Eugene, his own skill. If your Persona wrote this turn, choose 3 of your units instead of 1 to add plus 5k power and can attack from the back row. It's more hindering than it is an incentive to use that counter blast because of a lack of draw capabilities outside of draw triggers. But you do want to use that counter blast more often to have more attacks especially if you are running Charis, Lattice, Gnosla, etc. But if it's not 3 of them attacking from the back row, the deck struggles to put a dent in your opponent's hand, let alone his damage zone. Number 8, Zorga. Zorga has got a great thing going with Alchemagic. It's a good challenge for any player to balance out your deck with all the normal orders and your unit cards. But my god are they expensive to blast. Combining all of the costs for Alchemagic puts a lot of strain on your resources, and while there are ways to recover some of those resources and even ways to eliminate a particular cost, these order cards are still going to be fighting with your normal units for those same resources. Not only that, there's a feeling there that you will want to activate these normal orders in a specific fashion to have a more optimized effect. If you aren't able to, you're either stalling until so, or you're trying to piece together a puzzle as if you're trying to get your master's degree in Alchemagic. Number 7, Hexa Orb Sorceress. The familiar mechanic that comes from the old Magus decks are here in Overdress, and Hexa Orb Sorceress offers a great alternative style of play compared to Bastion. It offers a lot of top deck checking and altering them to make sure that you get your triggers placed on top so that you can check them and benefit from Hexa Orb Sorceress skill. You can also place a critical or front trigger on top for a guaranteed check while also getting plus one drive to maintain your hand count. T-Square Sorceress and Pentagleam Sorceress offers good regard skills, with Pentagleam being able to check the top deck, while T-Square can be used as a regard removal which is pretty excellent. So with all these great things I mentioned about Hexa Orb, why is it at number 7? Well, just like Magnolia, Persona Rai hinders it more than it benefits them. The main difference between them is that you still have the rest of your deck to check and possibly move cards to try and ensure a trigger check to activate not only Hexa Orb but also many other rear guards. But without the Persona Rai, you're missing a lot from not having the chance to ensure her own auto skill going off. And there's only 16 triggers in the deck, so you want to make it count as much as possible. Number 6, Barrel Magnus. Dark Irregulars has always been a popular deck for its power and capabilities by giving up 30% of your deck to be put into the soul. Yes, I did the math. And Barrow Magnus continues this style of play in Overdress. And what it does is immensely impressive. For one counterblast, 
if you have 15 cards in your soul, of course, you get a draw, you get increased power and critical, you have a strong field removal that can bypass resist style skills, and multi attacks when you call two rear guards from the soul. And the right line really helps the initial charge up, combine it with some rear guard calls, especially Electro Spartan, the great two in the line, achieving 10 in the soul is easy with the right plays. But despite all the good things happening for Barrow Magnus, its place on our list is only as low as it is because compared to the rest above it, it has a hard time coming out on top. Number 5, Nirvana. Smack dab in the middle of this list is the most balanced deck in all of Overdress. Nirvana and the Overdress mechanic has proven to be a reliable, high-powered deck thanks to Virena and its various forms. Virena Valiant benefits from having more original dress as well as its on-hit threat to restand. Virena Arx provides a draw too, Virena has a retire. It's hard to speculate what Virena Elga will add to the deck, but all of it shows that these are things that you can count on to attack your opponent head on with force behind it. And it all starts from the right line with Reno and Rayo being able to fetch Trickstar and Virena. Trickstar kicks off a lot of things for Overdress. Virena is a solid attacker once Nirvana comes into play. And on top of that, Nirvana can fetch Trickstar from the drop zone with an easy cost. What alters this deck's viability is the opponent and the player's own tactics. It's one of those decks that can define a player and reveal his skills in analyzing opponents, judging calls, and strategizing plays. Number 4, Violence Bruce. My personal deck of choice, Violence Bruce is one of those strong hitting decks that you can get right out from the start deck and has further improvements in the booster set. Violence Bruce has the capability to set the tempo during his turn and forces your opponents to adopt strats for set turn when he's ready to go into final rush. The support from even his base right line with Bad Steve and Angry Richard are both our units to be put to the front lines to attack your opponent with. The downside is that it's slow. Final Rush can only activate at the start of your turn with Violence Boost as your current Vanguard, meaning you're a sitting duck, or unviolence as I like to call it, until you can go. And that puts it lower on the list even if Bruce's flankers are on the field during his final rush, ranging from Eden to Jared. Number 3, Bastion. A tear of joy for any Morikawa players out there, Bastion is by far the wildest right line in all of Overdress. It's a deck that revolves around having great threes, from having them on the field to checking them for Bastion's restand. Its saving grace is that the right deck is a thing in Overdress. With it there to guarantee your right up, you have no qualms about filling your deck with only great threes, PGs and triggers to find at the top of your deck whenever Bastion attacks. Fort and Rooks provide great skills, with Fort gifting a superior call if it's a unit card, and Rooks gifting a draw. As you ride up, these skills have the feeling that they scale up with you as you go into Bastion. The drawback is that you have no guarding capabilities outside of your PGs and Blitz orders, meaning Bastion has very little stamina and can't keep up with decks or players that can go before he gets up to day 3. Number 2, Office. The top 2 on our list is the two Brand Gate right lines, and between Sarah Snow and Office, it wasn't hard to figure out who'd take the top spot. Take nothing away from Office though, as it's a power-based deck that uses tokens to supplement your back row. This leads to you not needing as many units to call down since half your field is taken care of when you go into Abyssal Dark Knight and summon these Shadow Army tokens. The rest of your deck then can be offensive front row attackers and normal orders that can increase the power to Office for an even harder attack power. What places this lower than Seraph Snow is that the right line, while effective, does force you to fish for your second world order card but it does provide good benefits to having multiple copies of these order cards in the deck to play down, as their on-place skills remain very helpful. But the word helpful is suited better for someone else. Number 1, Seraph Snow. No surprises here if you ask me, there's one word that can explain how Seraph Snow cinched the top spot on our list, and that word is splashability. We've all seen the hybrid builds of Office and Seraph Snow topping Japanese shop tournaments, Sarah Snow's Imprison is a vanguard and rearguard skill. As long as it's on the field somewhere, either flanking office as a rearguard or taking the ace spot as the vanguard, you can color blast one and imprison two of your opponent's rearguards. Of course, you do need the prison in order to use Sarah Snow's skill. And while not having her right line means you will need to manually fish it out, there has been very few cases where the player has trouble finding the prison. Especially when they play four copies, which they do. And that last paragraph that I just said out is only looking at Sarah Snow on her own. When we look at her own right line by itself, it's harder to argue that Sarah Snow shouldn't be considered as the best right line in Vega Overdress currently. Instant fetching of the one and only prison card you'll ever need, plenty of reliable resources for prisoner, especially with Spark Limone, and a comfortable resource usage per turn puts Sarah Snow at our number one. 
And as we found on our discussion streams, the right line is 14, 15, 16, and 17 respectively. Hori Jail is the least of our worries. FBI, open up! So what do you guys think? Does our list make sense or do you think a right line should be higher or lower down the list? Leave your comments below and be nice to each other. And while you're at it, why not suggest to us what other top 10 lists you want to see from us? We'd love to try and do more of these. At the same time, be sure to slam that like and subscribe button and ring the ding the bell so you get notified of all of our videos when they release, be it for Vanguard or for Battle Spirits. Be sure to follow us on all our socials, we're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We have a Discord as well where you can find myself, Dempster and Leon on most nights. If you like what we do here and want to support us directly, you can join our membership where it can be like Wen Hao Law, Daddy and Gieto, and Samuel McKay and have access to all of our me emotes and badges during our premieres and live streams. So with that said, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!